welcome to another jungle tutorial and in this one I will be covering a game that shows you how to carry laners when you are the only one who seems to want to win. Sometimes you have to be able to rotate to every situation, pick up kills when you can and simply do your best to stop the enemy team winning all by yourself. Perhaps even the enemy AD carry is really fed and basically doing all the work in team fights. Your bottom laner is nothing but a peanut and as such you will be brought to the brink of defeat. And as he is currently promo banned at Worlds, Pantheon hasn't seen much game time, but in solo queue he sometimes gets let through and that's when you can use one of the strongest champions to hard carry from the jungle even though he is technically better in a solo lane. Also please consider subscribing to help us hit that 100k mark while also liking if you do enjoy this video. To be good enough to be able to carry games like these requires constant improvement and focus in order to get yourself to become a better jungler. And the sponsor for today's video is there to help. Take it away, Rost. Hello, Blue Cane players. Have you realized what an inferior form you are taking? Well, let me show you the ticket to improve and become the ultimate form ever created. Head to Zar.gg, a free interface for you to use. No apps, no additional downloads. Simply enter in your summoner name, and it will show you a breakdown of what you should focus on, whether it's your weaknesses or your strengths, or both. Launch the pregame feature once you're in loading screen, and it will give you goals for that particular game specific to your champion and role. This makes every game a pure training session on the quest to improvement and on the quest to become Rost. Click the link in the description below, Blue Cane's need not apply. And once again, a big thank you to our weird red friend. And now heading into our game, we observe some leashless clears. Not always seen nowadays, especially the Rek'Sai version. Pantheon was a little bit mentally AFK at the beginning, but he did his Raptors, Red, and then Krugs. While the enemy Rek'Sai starts in Wolves. This is important because it's another version of the three camp clear into a bottom lane gank. It's a little bit healthier because you don't do your Raptors to begin with, but also is good if you are going for a leashless stud, letting your laners get to their lanes and set it up for that gang at level 3. And as is becoming predictable behavior, she heads to the bottom lane, exchanges flashes with the Vega, who was actually playing back, but the power of Rek'Sai is there to behold, and then she thinks about a cheeky invade on the Pantheon's blue. Now the reason the Pantheon went back after his Krugs you would have noticed is because he wants to go get that machete, but also because he knew that his clear is not as fast and efficient as a stronger meta jungler, and as such it's important he defends his buffs and defends his jungle. This is most vital. Because this quest to steal the blue buff was delayed due to the gank the Rex had on the bottom lane, this gives Pantheon the time to reach the location and push her off, keeping control of his area. This puts him in prime position for some of that good old spicy lane impact. After doing blue, doing the scuttle, given that Vega had lost his flash at level 3, Pantheon expects a Rek'Sai to punish the fact that his bottom lane is now pushing. This is just about good jungling instincts and putting your head inside the enemy jungler. His timing couldn't be more perfect and he's there for a flash W first blood kill onto the Rek'Sai. He can help now shove the wave and just a quick note, you'll see as he's about to go back here that he simply hugs the corner of the wall as he begins channeling. You are out of vision, the wave was pushing and no one will interrupt you so you can save time with an efficient back. However, he decides to do his blue camps given he has a machete from his first buy and the reason for this is that he wants to have smart camp sequencing to optimize level 6 but also given that the respawn timers are so low this early in the game, the Rek'Sai will no doubt head to her top side and perhaps invade after taking that scuttle crab. He doesn't want to give up those first rubber banded experienced raptors and krugs without a fight or he wouldn't be from Targon, he wouldn't be the unbreakable spear. He'd be the breakable spear from another region and they don't have thunderous thighs and chiseled jawlines and abs and uh... <clears throat> anyway, he goes to his topside camps and he reaches the raptors as he sees two babies squealing back to the hole because that whole family has been destroyed. Instead of counseling them and being sympathetic, he does what any Spartan would do. He pokes them twice and then heads to avenge the death of their family. He uses a little Rengar trick with a ward, hop over into the crockpit thinking he now has control of the stony beasts. However, Rek'Sai has planned an invade given that the top lane Tristan is exerting a lot of pressure on the Pantheon's Kale and they think they have the priority to win a 2v2 or even a 2v1. And as you can see what unfolds is simply the domination of someone who's called Mantheon and he picks up another two kills. This now is the beginning of the dominance that you can show across the map. So when you have an early gank, when you defend an invade, when your champion can win those 1v1 jewels, those 2v1 jewels, you're in a position that will allow you, especially with a global ultimate or a fast rotating mechanic like a Warwick W, Pantheon ultimate, Nocturne ultimate, to try and put the fires out that your team is creating. So what happens from there is he goes back, completes his warrior, he is level 6. Now while a lot of you would simply head to your red and your raptors to clear those camps up to get the second buff spawn, a good jungler who has a notable lead on the enemy jungler will look to invade and contest their camps, contest their buffs, and force the enemy team to have to deal with you, thus giving your laners time to catch up an experience and perhaps, you know, stop dying for a few minutes. 
As such, he walks on down, he steals the Raptor gank right in front of the Rek'Sai, and then uses that to transition into a gank on the mid lane. Now you'll see during this happening that the Rek'Sai is just watching completely helpless. She's level 4, he's level 6, there's no way in hell she can win a 1v1. In the meantime, the Misfortune bottom lane has been destroying the Vagar, and basically this is going to be a big problem for the Pantheon going forward into the mid and the late game. His bottom lane is not going to be useful at all. And as such, he uses his ultimate just to stop a little skirmish in the river. Not the best placement, not the best use of it. He could have probably walked on over to stop the fight going on, but nonetheless, it's a disengage. His team is safe for now. And what he does then is he walks into the enemy jungle further, trying to make them take the long way round, give the Vega as much farming time as possible, perhaps sneak away more camps, the red buff. But if you're looking to remove the enemy jungler from the game, such that your lanes can actually play freely, you also need to know when to give up certain things, because if you die here, you give away experience, camps, and pressure to the enemy team, and not just the enemy jungler, also the enemy bottom lane. So because of this, he falls back into the river, trying to anticipate a gank by the Rek'Sai, but it doesn't happen, and it simply gives him that scuttle crab control. From there, a lot of jungles also go back into your jungle, farm your Gromp, your blue, head back to base. Not a high pressure jungler, not someone who's looking to definitely hard carry the game. He waits in the bush expecting the Rek'Sai to perhaps rotate around after doing the red buff, but instead sees the Diana go really ham on his Orianna. He flanks around for a repeat gank, and then Diana does a nice job of turning into the tower to deny any gold to the Pantheon. You'll also note that Vagar and the Leona managed to get a kill on the enemy bottom lane, one of the few times we can say they were actually doing something good in this game. And yes, you'll observe this is a very strong extended sequence. All lanes currently need his help and he's doing a good job of reading where he needs to be. He got a gank off on the mid lane, invaded the enemy jungle, took the crab, shadowed the bottom lane, went back to the mid lane, and now he can transition that, declare his raptor camps, walk on up to the top lane, and get a nice gank on the Tristana. Remember with Tristana, you need to time your CCs and stuns appropriately because of her long range jump and the fact that if she has flash and ultimate, it can be very difficult to take her out. A Pantheon is also able to do that, and as such, all lanes have been ganked, all lanes have had help, yet he will still have to be the one to bring the win home, and if you can't, end up losing. And yes, most of your games will be like that. Your laners will be potatoes and you're the one who has to get fed, read the map appropriately, and make sure the enemy jungler isn't doing anything either. That's the biggest key here. And over the next few minutes, he's unable to put out all the fires going on all over the map. His laners are dying, he's unable to get any more ganks. So what do you do as a jungler in this kind of situation? Well, firstly, you'll note that he's going full lethality. He is not messing around, he wants to carry this game. He tries to hold the tower in the mid lane with his ultimate. Again, not the best use, however, if there were tower plates still up, you definitely don't want to get free knocks on that. If the tower is still standing after the tower plates have fallen, you don't want to lose that mid lane tower because it is so important for your defense of your jungle, of your map, when you aren't actually winning the game. The Tristana has roamed down, the Rex is able to shoot out a Prey Seeker and get herself an assist, pretending to be useful. After this, she takes a scuttle and tries to solo the Fire Dragon, but the Pantheon has a jungle sense about these things. When your laners are dead, enemy laners start disappearing, the jungle disappears from all vision, your jungle senses start tingling and you know she's probably on that dragon as such. Rexa has given Pantheon the best ever leash you could want on a Fire Drake, and he ends up sneaking that away, using his power level over her to push her off the neutral objective and punish the fact that the enemy laners didn't try and help her. Well, if you know you're living rent-free in the enemy jungle's head, and even though her lanes are winning, that means she's not actually getting fed from any ganks, she's not able to counter jungle because you're a beast, go take the Rift Herald. During the time of the game, especially this early to mid game phase, where you can't seem to be everywhere at once in order to help your team, or even be in one place at the right time because they're consistently taking bad decisions, what you can do is do your best to secure river control, vision, and get those objectives. There's nothing worse as laners knowing you're winning and that the enemy jungler's power isn't having sway over you, but then you're losing all these neutral objectives that can keep them in the game and also have that Kale on the enemy team as well. So now you see that Pantheon try and get a little bit desperate, needs to have that impact to try and save the game, ults into the bottom lane, however the Misfortune, Nautilus and Rexa combo way too strong and he gives that shutdown gold. That's such a difficult thing to do when you're a fed member trying to carry because when you do die, you sort of help the enemy along even more so than if you hadn't tried to help and it's a delicate balance, you need to be very intelligent about when you go in and when you don't. So before we get into the notable mid to late game plays that will decide the winner, as a jungler the map is still closed enough that you can continue to do jungly things. That very much includes still rotating to fights, having good pathing, getting your camps, and when Vega and Leona actually land a nice combo in the mid lane, you head on over and you pick up a double kill. That means when the Diana 1v1s your Vega and just takes him out of the map, 
You're right there to stun her, pick up that kill, transition that into a nice ultimate in the tower dive, behind the misfortune on the bottom lane, and you get the shutdown back on her. And then when the Rek'Sai fully tilted because she feels like a minion this game, yes this is actually a Rek'Sai one trick by the way, you pick up your 11th kill. Now a lot of you in the low elos are probably saying, well he's kill stealing, he's taking all the kills, give the kills to the laners. Sure it would be nice to have kills on all the laners, it would be nice to have kills on the Kale, however the Pantheon feels he has control over this game, he is the one to carry and he's still in the phase of the game where him being so far ahead is the only reason the game hasn't basically ended yet. Solo queue isn't pro play and you don't need to donate every kill to an ADC or a mid laner. I don't mean to go out of your way to kill steal, but when everyone's in a fight it's just important that you actually kill them, don't let people get away because you're waiting for your mid laner to throw out her spell. Might be on cooldown, maybe she has no idea. Point being, kill secured is better than kill escaped. Now you will notice from his map movement, it's up, down, mid, butt, top, get his camps in between ult to save fights. His ultimate is the saving grace here because he can get to situations way quicker than anyone else could. Essentially the twisted fate of jungle except with more bang. But despite the Rift Herald usage on that top lane, despite everything he's done, as soon as you group and one of your team members dies to the misfortune who is the fed, fed and carrying the enemy team, you're not going to be able to win those fights. Akela isn't really online. He hits a nice death spear to take out the Nautilus, but that's not going to stop the enemy team rotating and taking that Baron. Seemingly the whole game was simply him rotating and getting as many kills as possible in clean up situations, dictating the pace and suppressing the enemy jungler, but it wasn't enough to stop the fact that the enemy team as a unit is still way far ahead than his. Now the last video we did on this, the Warwick rotated everywhere, it was one of my games, you end up with 20 kills, 80% kill participation, and you're still able to put out the fires and get the towers and shove to win. In games like this where despite the fact you're doing that, just do your best not to tilt. Yes, you are trying to 1v9, yes, you got objectives, you got towers, you got kills, you got cleanups. The enemy jungle is nothing but a minion because of you. You have to understand that it is solo queue, you do have a Kale, you do have a Vega, and you've held out long enough for them to reach points where you can actually counteract the enemy team's cohesion in order to mount the comeback. To that end, if you're trying to be the big daddy raw spot jungler and you see someone split pushing in the side lane, doesn't matter if your teams follow you or not like in this situation, go and 1v1 them and take them out. If the misfortune greedily TPs in because she thinks it's just you and whether by yourself or with your team, take her out as well. Now you got a 3v5 and they've wasted the duration of the Baron buff. All you're doing is you're holding out, trying to get that Kale to reach critical mass, trying to get the Vega to eventually learn press buttons. And if that doesn't happen, you have to hope to the solo queue gods that the effect you've had on the enemy jungler continues to translate well, and the frustration the enemy team will have because they can't seem to close due to the big wall you're putting up in front of your base, and the fact that they can't seem to be able to deal with you, means that even if your team is still being picked off and they're being shoved down the mid lane, the Rek'Sai is going to be so hungry for victory to be carried to this win that they're going to tower dive you in a Kale and you get to pick up another kill. Now this is a very important occurrence because even though you lose your inhibitor, abusing back timings to secure objective, maybe say Lord Baron, can be one of the keys to victory. Now, the Rek'Sai is dead because she got greedy and is super tilted. The enemy team did get an inhibitor, but they've gone back to spend their gold. The Diana, on the other hand, wants to split push bottom lane. This disjointed approach means you rush to the Baron as fast as you can and you secure it while the Rek'Sai is dead. Now, instead of being caught out like the rest of Pantheon's team once again, he goes back to base and stops the bottom in hip from falling. Most Dianas at this stage probably think they've got a free 1v1, but not against Pantheon. And you'll see from Rex's perspective, now the desperation to close has come in, Kale gets a double kill, and seemingly their victory is being thrown down the toilet because of one disjointed move, because Pantheon has put a stamp on this game and everyone knows it's his show. Now you've got time, he's clearing the super minion waves, they have the Baron, and all it takes is them to push down into a neutral area now that they have the inhibitor pressure back up, their scaling comp has finally scaled a little bit, enough to sort of win any team fight, and then they can push to win. How quickly the game shifted from moment to moment, holding out as long as they could in the mid game, surviving the early game only because of the Pantheon's heroics, his rotations, his objective control. Just to lose one team fight, a Baron, and seemingly the game, but fortunately again, thanks to the Pantheon, picking off the Diana, picking off the Misfortune, holding off the base, getting that Rek'Sai so tilted that she tower dives a Kale. This leads them to get a counter Baron, stop the split push, win a fight, and then the game. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and comment if you did learn something and enjoy the video. Always like to try and get around a thousand likes per video. Shows me what you want to see. Please consider subscribing for more content like this. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.